continuing our adventure, the Lone Wolf series of Choose Your Own Adventure novels. We are in book five, Shadow in the Sand, where we have been captured by a replacement ruler uh, who has decided that we are a threat to him. We were imprisoned, all of our stuff was taken, uh, but we did manage to overpower our guards when they came into our cell, and we have made our way to find all of our equipment, and that's where we left off last time. So, uh, yeah, I needed a break after that, because that was ridiculous. That was, yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, we have all of our stuff back, though, so now we have a really good chance of getting out of here. So we're going to continue on with our journey. We uh, So this is the page where we found all of our stuff. We are going to continue to search for some useful items for just in case, because more is always better. So let's keep, let's, let's uh, go ahead and get started. You sift through the vast number of items. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have the browser read this. We sift through all of this stuff and we find all of these items. Silver comb and hourglass. Uh, we're definitely going to take that healing potion. Oh, come on. It's got to be difficult. All right. Uh, okay, so there's a... If it doesn't say special item, that means that it needs to go into the backpack. So I am going to put... I'm actually going to take these and put them down here. And that'll get rid of that. We can get three more meals. Um, it hasn't said anything about not being able to use my hunting ability, but I have to imagine that we're not going to be able to use that inside the palace, so... Part of me thinks I should probably add another meal on here. I'm just going to change these to the same meal. It doesn't matter whether they're special rations or not. Uh, fix the border on that. Sorry, I have to, I have to keep on top of format of this stuff, because sometimes when you copy things, it changes it. Okay, so we have a rope, which is definitely going to be important. So we took the healing potion. I definitely want to take the prism, because you never know. We'll take the hourglass. I can't imagine the silver comb is going to be useful for anything, but... Mm, it sucks that none of these are special items, because I have space in my special items uh, thing. But... Uh, I definitely want to have the healing potions. I really want to have the meals. We didn't start this with a rope, so I'm going to assume that we can leave that behind. And I'm just going to hope that we don't come across anything where we need rope. Mm. Okay, let's continue on then. You follow a straight passage of pale, rose-colored stone, which soon ends at an empty vestibule. In its north wall is set a great wooden door covered with engraved bronze plaques and studded with bronze nails. There is a curious lock set into the middle of this door, encircled by a beautiful carving of a long-tailed scorpion. A closer look at the lock reveals a series of Vasagonian numerals, numbered 1 to 200, engraved in the lock. You recognize the design, it is a Cloesian combination lock. Okay, well, we don't know the correct number to open this, so and if we choose the wrong combination, we don't get a second chance. I have to imagine this is going to go badly for us. So since we don't know the number, and I mean, there's no way to know what the correct number is. How would I even know if I got the right, right number? Yeah, you just have to know the right number. So if you know the number, then you get it. If, so you're, you're obviously going to choose the wrong number if you don't. So we're just going to leave. <clears throat> After concentrating on the lock for several minutes, you realize that it is connected to an alarm. If you turn the lock to the wrong number, the alarm will be triggered, alerting the entire palace guard. Excellent. All right, so if we, we do have the skill of mind over matter. And we also do have, we've picked up six cents in the last one, so let's do this one. You channel all your Kai skill into detecting the number that will open the door. It is a strenuous task and one that demands great concentration. Gradually, the image of two numbers, six and seven, begin to form in your mind. The image is hazy, and you're not sure if the number is 67 or 76. You are exhausted by your efforts, and they have cost you two endurance points. Deduct these from your current endurance points total before choosing between the two possibilities. Mother... <laughs> really? They're going to leave it up to a coin flip as to whether this goes well for us or not? I hate, I hate that they do this. 
Well, I guess we'll let fate decide. Zero, uh, one through five, we'll choose the first one. Six through zero, we'll choose six through ten, we'll choose the other one. All right, I guess it's the other one. You flick the dial to seven six and press your shoulder against the great bronze plaques, expecting to hear at any moment the creak of hinges. You detect a sound, but it is not the noise of a door opening. You have chosen the wrong number. Great. Of course we did. That's just the, the way my life goes. The soft shuffle of stealthy feet <laughs> warns that you are no longer alone. You whirl around and crouch in readiness for combat. It is this automatic reaction to danger that saves you from a drugged needle fired from a blowpipe. As the tiny missile clips the hood of your cloak, you see the firer reach into his belt pouch for another. Behind him are two warriors armed with sharp, barbed tridents. The three block your passage from the vestibule. So we can attack them before the fire can reload his blowpipe, or we can try to dodge. That's probably not going to go well for us. So let's just, they're going to force us into some kind of negative thing. Let's just fight these guys and hope for the best. With a tiger-like bound, you are among the startled guards. The blowpipe firer raises his weapon, but a well-aimed kick to the forehead counters his move. He somersaults backwards, cracking his head against the wall with a sickening thud. A trident flashes towards your ribs, you sidestep and grab the haft with your free hand, pulling the guard off balance. He stumbles forward and falls flat on his face. You turn just in time to face the third guard, his trident is poised to stab you. Okay, well, we're gonna fight now. So his combat skill is 15. So yeah, we got we definitely we have him definitely by eleven or more, and he only has twenty three hit points. So that's not that's good for us because that's where we are. So if we can roll an eight, nine, or a zero, we can one shot this dude. Let's see. All right. So for those of you who don't know, uh, your tip the the book includes a chart of random numbers that you are supposed to like hold a pencil over and push down on it. I just use a d ten because it's it's values between zero uh, one one and ten. So here we go. Round one. Three, of course we did. He takes 10 and I take two. Round two. A nine, we insta-kill him, excellent, and we take no damage. So we can be done with that. So what are we down to, 20? Okay, so we can get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Okay, we did, and we, and we did it in three rounds or less, so we can, we can keep going. The man screams and keels over, writhing on the floor for a few moments before exhaling his last breath. Meanwhile, his partner has scrambled to his feet, forgetting his weapon in his hurry to escape along the passage. You give chase, pausing only to snatch up the discarded trident, you know you must stop him before he warns other guards. You draw back the trident and throw. It strikes him squarely in the back, pitching him forward as it makes impact. He is dead before he hits the floor. A search of the dead bodies uncovers the following items. For go okay, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have him read through that. So uh, now we got to start making inventory decisions here. Well, we're definitely gonna add the gold crowns that we have that he that he did. We don't need the dagger or the sword, but we do get a potion of Alather, which increases combat skill by two points for the duration of one fight. And I'm assuming that that's something that we could we can that we can just use once we realize that we need it for a fight. That's going to be a backpack item, which means I'd have to give up. I'd have to give something up. But to be perfectly honest with you, I think I'm willing... Oh, what was the silver silver comb? Sorry, I must have typed. I, must, I, had, I had rope in my head, I guess. Uh, all right, so I'm going to give up one of my, my healing potions. It's two combat, one fight. I can also take the blowpipe and remaining sleep dart. Mark them on your action chart. I feel like that's something I should take. That might give us options in the future to stealthily take care of things. I'm going to give up a meal for that. So blowpipe and dart. Okay. Because I'm assuming you can just store the dart inside the blowpipe. It's just one sleep dart, so 
I'm going to assume that's how that works. Maybe I'm cheating. If I'm cheating, then I'm cheating. But I'm assuming that's how that works, and it makes sense to me. So we're just going to keep going. In the robe, you find in the robe you find a small piece of parchment. Today's date and the number six, <laughs> 67, Of course, Durr. We had that. We had that from the beginning. Whatever. Moving on. Sorry. I just it irritates me when things work out that way. It just always does. You hear a faint click followed by a soft whirring sound. The bronze door slides open. As you hurry through. The door clicks shut behind your back, as softly as it had opened point four. Instinct tells you that you have entered the chambers of the upper palace, the sumptuous private enclave of the Zakon. You walk upon glistening tiles of opal and platinum, past sculptures and statues of pure gold. The door of solid amethyst ahead seems plain in comparison to the breathtaking splendor of this private world. Beyond the door lies another unique and startlingly beautiful world, the Arboretum. A circular, cathedral-like arena spreads out below you, the green velvet canopy alive with the sound of bird song. Trees of every color, shape, and size flourish in the deep, dark soil of the floor. The Zakan's Arboretum houses a specimen of every tree that grows in Magnamund, and many species that are now extinct elsewhere. As you walk the wrought iron balcony which encircles the arboretum, you recognize the leaves of a somlanding oak. You feel a sudden wave of homesickness, but it does not make you despair, rather it renews your determination to escape from this hostile, sun-bleached land. At one of the exits from the arboretum, you discover a quarterstaff propped against the wall. If you wish to take this, remember to mark it on your action chart. The desire to escape urges you on as you leave the arboretum and hurry through a network of lavish corridors and empty, deserted vestibules. You reach a landing where a broad staircase descends to a massive room that occupies most of the lower palace. From the top of the staircase, hidden by the shadow of a pilaster, you stare down on a sight that freezes your blood with terror. Oh great. Upon a raised platform, carpeted with scarlet fur, sits the Vasagonian emperor, Zakon Kima. He is robed in gold but devoid of all ornamentation. In his hand is an orb of black metal, and in his eye an ice-cold cruelty that chills your spine. The Zakon is a man of awesome countenance, but he pales in the shadow of his companion. Before him stands the cause of your terror. A helm as black as death itself hides the face, but the stench of decay and a hideous sepulchral voice betray the identity. Give me Lone Wolf. It is the fell voice of a mortal enemy, a dark lord of Helgdad. As the Zakon rises to his feet, you notice a flicker of doubt, or perhaps of fear, dim his cruel gaze, but he is quick to mask it. He will be brought to you at sunset in exchange for the Orb of Death. It is agreed. You have the orb, echoes the chilling voice. Give me lone wolf. The Zakon hides his fear well, but time is not on his side. The game of bluff he is playing is deadly. However, the fact that he has not yet been discovered is evidence of his powerful will, for you sense the Dark Lord is persistently clawing and probing at his mind. You will get your Northlander, Lord Hawken says the Zakon, his voice curt with anger, when you tell me why your servants defile the tomb of the Majhan. You claim to have no need for gold and jewels, why then do you plunder the graves of our ancestors? A deathly quiet fills the hall, only the unnatural hiss of the Dark Lord's breath disturbs the silence. This land, this insignificant speck of sand, harbors two small thorns that prick our skin. We seek to remove them both, forever. The fledgling Kai, Lone Wolf, is the thorn that denies us Samarlund. The tomb of the Majhan hides the other thorn that threatens us, the accursed book of the Magna Kai. Your heart pounds as the words echo in your head. The book of the Magna Kai. Suddenly, the reason why you have been enticed into a deadly trap becomes clear, and the sinister truth is revealed. The Book of the Magna Kai is one of the oldest legends of Samarlund. With the wisdom of the Magna Kai, Sun Eagle, the first Kai Grand Master, instilled the disciplines into the warriors of the House of Ulnar, the bloodline of your king, 
that were to save your land from devastation at the hands of the Dark Lords. The Book of the Magna Chi was lost hundreds of years ago, but its wisdom was kept alive, handed down through generations of Somlanding warriors so that they could share the strength to resist their eternal enemies, the Dark Lords of Helgdad. If the Dark Lords discover and destroy the Book of the Magna Chi, the secrets will be lost forever, and when you die, the Chi will become extinct. However, if you discover the Book of the Magna Chi first and deny the Dark Lords their prize, all the wisdom of the Magna Chi will be revealed to you. Through its wisdom you will become strong, strong enough to reach the ultimate achievement for a Somlanding warrior, to become a Kai Grand Master. However, the peril and the glory of the quest that lies ahead are distracting you from more immediate danger. To discover this danger and to begin the quest for the Book of the Magna Chi, turn to Part 2 of Shadow on the Sand. Well, okay then. <laughs> Let's move on. Suddenly, you catch sight of two warriors creeping towards you from a passage to your right. They are clad in jet black armor and scarlet robes, and their hideous death masks identify them as Dracarim warriors. They are men, but they are evil men, as evil as the Dark Lords whom they serve. One of them holds a razor fanged Akataz, a creeping leathery war dog, straining on a chain leash. The Dracar hisses and the Akataz springs towards your throat. Oh, great. All right, I need to figure out when our last combat was. So we had one, two, three, four, four. So I think we ended at 20, so we should be at 24 for that fight. But we definitely don't want to fight if we don't have to. Let's try to evade and escape. As you uh, Before we get to that, if you're just joining us for this adventure, there's no experience points in this. If you, uh, Every fight is a risk. So if you don't need even, even relatively easy fights, they just drain your hit points and you don't get anything out of it unless... They somehow happen to have some kind of crazy special item, and that's rare. So it's better to just run away if you don't have to fight. It's just a drain on your hit points. You turn and sprint along the passage. A terrible roar of hatred and rage fills the hall. Kill him. You glance back. The Dracarim are unsheathing their black swords, eager to obey their master's command. You race down some stairs, through a silver archway, and along a balcony that overlooks the lower palace. The Akataz is nearly upon you, you feel its fetid breath on your legs. Instinctively you dodge aside at the very second it leaps. It crashes muzzle first into a marble pillar. A howl of pain leaves its broken mouth as you step forward and strike a death blow, it will never attack again. You glimpse the grim silhouette of Dark Lord Hawken in the hall below, his spiked fist raised. A dracker appears as if from nowhere and advances, a sword held high above his skull-like helm. There is a deafening crack as a bolt of blue lightning streaks from a stone in the Dark Lord's hand and comes hurtling towards you. The Dracker lunges and wounds your arm, you lose two endurance points, but do. he now stands in the path of the bolt. In a flash of light, the Dracker is gone, leaving only cinders and the rotten odor of scorched flesh behind. There we go. At the end of the balcony, there is another. There are another arch and a staircase. We can go through the arch or take the stairs. The problem is, is it doesn't tell me whether the stairs go down or up. But I believe, since it told us we're in the upper section of the castle, that the stairs probably lead down, and we're trying to get out of this place. So I'm gonna go down and hope for the best. The blood is pounding in your ears as you bound up the marble steps. Twenty feet ahead of you. There is a landing with a stone door set into the wall. The stairs continue to ascend to a parapet walkway, at the end of which is another stone door, identical to the first. Suddenly, the door on the first landing swings open and a palace guard wheels round to face you. Maj Han, he cries, fumbling for the hilt of his sword. That's annoying. It would have been, been nice if it would have told me it was going up and not down. Well, we're definitely going to try to take this guy by surprise. Using your skill for unarmed combat taught to you by your Kai masters, you grab the startled guard by the throat and pitch him over the low wall at the edge of the landing. His cry of terror fills the air until he crashes into the flagstones below. Well, we can keep going up the stairs or we can go through the door where the, where the guard came from. 
I feel like going continuing up is going to just make things worse for us. We're going to get trapped up in the top layer. A narrow corridor faces you, which is lit by the orange light of the setting sun filtering down from small open windows set high above in the patterned walls. The air is filled with the sound of running feet, for the Grand Palace is now on full alert. The palace guards and the evil Dracarim are bent on finding and killing you, for their own lives will be forfeit if they fail. You reach a door that opens onto an outside balcony. A stair descends to a bridge that connects a needle-like tower of white marble to the main palace. The stair itself continues past the bridge, disappearing down towards the palace gardens far below. You see no soldiers, either on the bridge or in the gardens. Okay, well, we can go to the tower or we can go down into the gardens. I feel like the gardens will get us access to the wall and maybe find us a place to climb over, so let's go that way. At the bottom of the stairs, a wooden door braced with iron blocks the entrance to the scented garden. Frantically you twist the handle, but it does not open, the door is locked. Then a couple of palace guards appear on the bridge above, they see you and unsling their heavy crossbows. Well, we don't have the copper key and I don't really want to ride up and fight these guys. We can try to climb over the door, which is what we were going to try to go through in the first place. So let's see if that works. Using the bands of iron as footholds, you clamber to the top of the door. Long spikes protrude from the timber crossbar, each coated with an oily black tar. Just as you are stepping over the spikes, the guards fire their crossbows. Okay, so we have to roll a random number. And clearly, it, it, since it's having us subtract numbers for having higher skills and things like that, we obviously want to get the four or less. So... I do have the rank of guardian or higher, and I also do have the hunting skill, so we can subtract three from the number that we roll. Let's hope for the best. Two minus three is negative one, so we definitely get to take this option here. X. You dive into the garden below, avoiding death by a fraction of a second. The crossbow bolts ricochet off the poison-tipped spikes and shoot into the air, the whine of their twisted metal shafts fading into the sky. The enclosed garden is full of the fragrance of exotic plants and flowers, clustered around a sculptured pool of deep blue water. It is a beautiful sight but one that you dare not stop to enjoy. The palace guards are sure to give chase and you must keep moving. Ahead, beyond a tree-lined colonnade, a flight of steps ascends to a small portal in the wall of the upper palace. To your right, a leafy tunnel winds away into the shrubs and trees. Well, we do have the Kai Discipline of Tracking, which always gives you a better result, so let's do that one. Your Kai sense of tracking reveals that the winding path leads into the Zakan's Arboretum, his Cathedral of Trees. The stairs to the portal lead to a private chamber in the Upper Palace, but you still cannot tell what the chamber contains. Okay, so I don't... weren't we already in there? I remember we were they were talking about we were in the Arboretum before. So, we don't want to go that way. We want to go a different way, I guess. I Beyond the portal lies a vaulted corridor leading to a grand stairway. You narrowly avoid confrontation with a dozen Dracarim, saved by your lightning reactions. As the enemy rush from an archway on the second floor landing, you dive behind a statue of the recently deceased Zakon Medalla. They are so intent on their chase that they fail to notice your hiding place and hurry down the stairs, grunting in their heavy armor as they run. Silently, you give thanks that Zakon Medalla was a very stout man and that his statue casts a very large shadow in which to hide. At the top of the stairway you discover a hatch, which gives access to the roof. You climb through it and follow a path of sun-bleached tiles that wind in and out of the domes and turrets, eventually leading to a bell tower. You are exhausted and need to rest, your mind still full of the shock of your encounter with Dark Lord Hawken. The sound of his terrible voice repeating the words, Book of the Magna Chi echoes again and again in your mind. With desperation sapping your will, you peer out through a grill in the bell tower. The sight before you renews your flagging hope, for it inspires a daring escape plan. 
Okay. Below the bell tower you see a line of Itikar pens, each with its own circular landing platform. Itikar are a breed of huge black birds that nest in Aries high in the peaks of the Dahir and Vakar mountains. The Vasagonians have long since tamed these giants of the skies, using them as winged mounts for their army leaders, their scouts, couriers, and envoys. An Itikar and rider swoop down out of the reddening sky and alight upon the platform nearest to the bell tower. Slaves hurl a rope to the rider, who in turn fixes it to a saddle ring before he jumps to the ground. The Itikar caws and beats its huge wings as it is slowly winched into the pen by a hidden capstan. The rider and the slaves leave the platform, there is now only one sentry on guard at the pen. If you can overpower him, you can make your escape on the back of the giant bird. Okay, well we do possess the blowpipe and dart, so let's do that. Taking care to load the blowpipe correctly, you raise the unfamiliar weapon to your lips and take aim. The sentry is standing very still, he makes a perfect target. You inflate your cheeks and fire. Okay, so we have to roll a random number. We do have weapon skill, so we are able to add that. Okay, here we go. We just have to roll above it. We have to roll a four or more, and we, and we get to add two to the number that we roll. So as long as we don't roll a one, we're good. A five. So that works. The guard raises a hand to the back of his neck and removes the tiny dart, but before he realizes what has happened, he keels over unconscious, spread-eagled on the landing platform. You can hear the clatter of running feet echoing across the palace roof, the drachrim have arrived. You must act quickly if you are to avoid them. As much as I want to search the sleeping guard, I have a feeling that's going to force a fight. We just need to hurry up and get in there and get out. The great black bird beats its massive wings, cawing hoarsely through the domed pen. Two black eyes, fierce and cold, fix you with a deadly stare as you edge nearer to its perch. Grabbing the saddle pommel, you haul yourself up, but suddenly there is a flash of razor-sharp talons. Instinctively, you shield your face as a glint of orange sunlight is caught on the Itikar's curved beak, for it slashes the air barely inches above your head. Okay, uh, it didn't tell me to remove the blow dart and the blow pipe and dart, so I'll just say blow pipe for now. Alright, I don't have Animal Kinship or the Onyx Medallion, so we have to pick a number from the table. We have reached the Aspirin or higher stage, so we can add two to whatever number we roll. Um, okay, so we have to roll and hope that we roll high, I guess. Four, five, six. Itikar are wild and malicious creatures. It can take several years for a rider to tame and train one, but once trained, the giant black birds are fiercely loyal. As you approach, the Itikar senses that you are not his master and furiously attacks you with its deadly beak and talons. Great. Okay, so I need to go back and find how many pages we've done since the last combat. So, the last combat. Really? It was really this far back? Okay, that's definitely enough pages for us to have fully healed by now, so... Alright, so we're gonna fight the Itikar. It has a combat skill of 17, so we have a, a combat ratio of 10. It has 30 hit points. Let's fight! Round 1. 4. It's gonna be 11 and 2. Round 2. Oh, hold on, let me read it. Fight the combat is normal, but double all endurance points lost by the giant bird. When its skull fall, score falls to zero below, you have subdued it enough to climb into the saddle. All endurance points you lose in the combat run, count as wounds and must be deducted from your combat point total. So we did 11, so that's actually 22. All right, one more. I, roll, I already rolled one. Sorry, I didn't look at the number, but it was, it was higher than what I just rolled, so that's good. Uh, so 18, to, 18 and 3. So I just need to take off the 18, or the 3 there, because I lost the 18. We've won the fight. We've subdued it. He's going to let us fly him now. Oh. What were we down to? We were down to 27. All right, now I can delete all that. Uh, that goes away, that goes away. All right, uh, we do successfully re reduce it, so we'll go here. The Itikar fixes you with a cold, black stare, but you sense that it is no longer hostile. 
As you settle on its wide saddle, you catch sight of the Dracarim streaming across the gangplank. Leaning forward, you unhook the anchor rope from the saddle ring and grab the thick leather reins. You are jerked backwards in the saddle as the Itikar leaves its perch. It shrieks and caws, its wings beating as loud as thunder. A handful of Dracarim are scattered as if they were rag dolls as the great black bird emerges from the pen and takes to the sky. You catch a glimpse of a Dracar, his death mask slashed in two by the bird's razor sharp talons, as he pitches from the landing platform and tumbles to his death in the palace gardens far below. The golden domes of the Grand Palace grow smaller as the Itikar gathers speed. Soon, you have passed over the city wall and are heading out towards the shimmering salt flats of Lake Inrahim. The land below is bathed in beautiful orange twilight, as the sun slowly sinks behind the Dahir Mountains to the west. Elated by your escape, you throw back your head and give voice to a triumphant yell that is carried away on the chill evening wind. As if in answer to your cry, an echoing chorus of shrieks pierce the sky. Fear returns to your heart as you catch sight of a flock of Kron, hideous leathery winged flyers. Each carries a Dracarim warrior on its back. They are over a mile behind you, but they are quickly closing the gap. Less than an hour of light remains, if you can evade them a little longer, you may be able to lose them when night falls. You must decide in which direction to fly, for you are now above the center of Lake Inrahim, Consult the map before making your decision. Alright, so we have made our daring escape for the most part. Um, but to leave a little bit of suspense to see if we have to fight these guys, we're going to end the episode here. Uh, so thank you very much for joining me today. I really hope you're uh, having fun with the story. And be sure to come back next time to find out what happens as we try to escape our flying pursuers. Uh, thanks for watching again. And see you guys next time.